Hey folks, my name is Ravish and welcome back to another video in the series of DevOps real-time scenarios, DevOps real-time challenges, situations or questions. So this is video number 11. If you're new over here, you can check out all the other videos, 10 videos before this video in the playlist, you can take a look at my channel. But yes, before moving forward, I would like to request that kindly subscribe to the channel because that would really support me because that's free for you, but that would really help me to grow. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So the problem statement is an application runs on EC2. So you can read in the first line that this application is working, is running on EC2. The application has an elastic IP address. So I'll reiterate an application runs on an Amazon EC2 instance. It has an elastic IP address. So this line is done and this line is done. The application requires access to the database. So this application requires access to the database. And this database is in VPC B. So there are two VP VPCs right now, VPC A and VPC B. And then VPC A and VPC B are in the same AWS account. So in order to understand it, I'll show you a diagram to make it correct. So now you can see this is the diagram. So there is a same AWS account. There are two VPCs, VPC A and VPC B. Inside VPC A, we have a application running inside an EC2 instance and this has an elastic IP address. So if someone wants to access this application, he or she cannot, can go to this elastic IP and can access this application. But this application wants the access to the database, to this database, right? And this database is in VPC B. So the problem is you have to give a solution which will provide the required access. Okay, so this access has to be required. So this is the problem statement. Now there can be multiple answers, more than one or more than two answers for this equation. We will talk about two condition over here. First, which solution will provide the required access? Second, which solution will provide the most secure access? So we'll talk about two things. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the access part only, right? So if you just want to give the access, how we can do that? And the second part we're going to talk about is required access has to be has to be most secure. Okay, so that's the keyword over here. So that's what we have to do. So uh, keep out keep your uh, pen and paper ready, you write the solution, try to think about the solution. Take a look at this diagram, you are having a same account, two VPCs, application, just a very basic problem, try to understand it and try to gather all the concepts that you have learned in AWS and try to resolve this, okay? And within a few seconds, I'll be appearing with the solution. But yeah, in the meantime, kindly like the video, please comment down and subscribe to the channel and I'll appear with the solution. Okay, so the color of solution is green, so there are more than one solution for this, but we'll talk about the conditions later, okay? So the first solution is, what you can do is, you can create a DB instance security group. So there has to be a security group for DB instance, okay? So if you have a DB instance, you can create a security group for that, and it'll allow all traffic from the public IP address of the application server in VPC A. So second step would be allowing traffic, all traffic basically, allowing all traffic from public IP of the application server. Uh, which is situated in VPCA. VPCA. Okay, so basically they are saying, let's go to this application. So in this database, there would be a security group, right? So we can create over here a security group for this instance. And let's consider this is in another EC2. There is another EC2 over here. And let's call it EC2. Okay, so we are going to create an SG, which is security group, and it will allow all traffic from the public IP address of the application server. So basically when this server is going to make a call to this database, it is going to allow all. So I hope you know about inbound and outbound basically, right? 
in the security group inbound is what connection is coming in outbound is what connection what call is going outside of the security group so we're going to allow to this this will work this is one way but there is a flaw with this thing now what happens whenever we have let's say we have this one ec2 instance and this is another ec2 instance and we have a database over here and we have an application over here this is very common okay this is very common but we always have private private uh, ips for this we have a public ip for this why do we do that because public everyone from the user as as user from the internet is going to make a call on this public ip it's going to access these application but if we are going to make the ip addresses of this database as public will it be secure anyone can make a call and it's very much easy to hack these kind of databases if they are on public network or basically having a public ip so what we generally do we create a private ip for this and then it is going to make a call to this so that's the ideal way to do it a lot of people can ask a question a question in that interview that uh, why do we keep our databases in a private ip and why do we keep the application in the public ip because this is the answer to this public ip can be accessed by everyone on the internet one user 10 user multiple users and private ip should be accessed by only the application that's why we keep it but right now if you are going to create a security group over here and in that you are allowing all the traffic from the application over here it will become very easy for the hackers to hack the database and get your information stealing so this is not a very secure way so this is not very secure okay uh, secure i'm sorry for my handwriting let me write this this way secure this is not secure okay so this is an answer to the question but uh, if you give this answer to the interviewer he or she can say that okay this is fine but this is not a good practice to open up the ip address for the for the public and this is not a very good practice so what you can improve in that so what you can do it the solution for this so what you can do this over here second part is you can configure a vpc pairing connection okay so vpc pairing connection is between vpc a so this is vpc a and this is vpc b so you can introduce a vpc pairing connection now this pairing connection will secure your system now let us understand what is vpc connection so if you google this is the official documentation of vpc pairing on amazon.com so this is a virtual private cloud is a virtual network dedicated to your aws account it is logically isolated from other virtual networks in the aws cloud you can launch aws resources such as amazon ec2 instances into your vpc a vpc pairing connection is a networking connection between two vpcs and that was the answer to our problem you can see this vpc a you can see this vpc b and there is a vpc pairing connection so this is a signature uh, this is a basically a sign for this there is a subnet over here there is a subnet over here and then we have a connection between both so if your application is in this this vpc and your database is in this vpc they can easily talk to each other through vpc pairing connection and that is the most secure way this is a very basic problem and a lot of people has asked this in an interview like how would you connect between vpc and vpc b how will you talk to each other you can read more about this what is the advantage of is like aws uses existing infrastructure of vpc to create vpc pairing connection it's neither a gateway nor a vpn connection and does not rely on separate piece of physical hardware there is no single point of failure for communication on a bandwidth bottleneck so this is one very big advantage for this okay so i'm going to pair this uh, i'm going to copy this link and paste it under this video so that you can go through it there is a pricing for vpc pairing connection you can go through it and there are two more things that i wanted to show you just before that let me show you so this is something that you need to know so basically this is for let me just scroll down This is for setting up for Amazon RDS. RDS basically your uh, data for database service. It is called as relational database service. You can study more about this. And this is for creative administrator access, programmatic access, doesn't matter, requirements, this and this. You can go through this. And 
this can be helpful for you to provide access to your db instance in your vpc by creating a security group so you remember like i have told you about the security group right that you were creating so you can study more about this on this i'm going to link it and how do you create these are the steps that you can know and there is one more thing which is important for this question to understand how can i troubleshoot connectivity to an amazon rds db instance that uses a public or a private subnet of a vpc there's a short video for uh, from amazon itself you can go through it it's 14 minute lo minutes long and this is the problem statement over here i can connect to my amazon relational database this and this and how can i do this there's a short description for it resolution and how to do about it you can study more about this okay so this brings us to the end of this video but i will reiterate it what was my question we have a same aws account we have vpc a and vpc b we have ec2 instance over here and we have ec2 instance over here or you can have a database instance that's also fine you have an elastic ip that does not matter it should be public it is public and the application is there it's trying to make a call to the database of the vpc the question is what is how it can do it so the one thing is you can create a security group which allows all the public traffic from this ip but this is not secure so this couldn't be a solution this is a solution but this is not a secure one solution okay and if an interviewer asks you what is the most secure solution then you can talk about the other part which is the vpc pairing so basically you can do the vpc pairing which i'll just show you so there was a sign over there right like this like this so this is vpc pairing in both of them and you can study more about the vpc pairing over the hair and this is a better diagram if you can see okay so i hope you folks have understood this part if there is anything if there is any confusion feel free to uh, comment below i will address that another good thing about this is that this is a very basic solution and if you study more about it you can know a lot more about vpc pairing so your three four concept would be clear over this all right so uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel please comment down below so thanks guys if there is anything feel free to comment below and we will address that and i'll see you in the next one